Hi there, welcome back to PCI Tech TV, where we pass on tech tips and new product information from PCI Geomatics. We're going to continue on looking at some new capability within Geomatica 2012, and uh, Sean's going to show us a couple of things uh, that we've improved with our uh, with with Geomatica, basically to uh, to make it easier for to, for you to complete your your work. We've added a couple of new functionality. One of them is just the ability to use the mouse wheel for panning and zooming. So this becomes quite advantageous when collecting training sites and classification, as well as many other tasks. But we're going to focus on training site collection and just show how this simplifies and actually significantly speeds up the process of collecting training sites in your image. So in the past, what we had to do was if we wanted to go to a new area, we have to actually click on the panning option or the zoom in and out options here, and then zoom into the area and then we could drag with our mouse as usual using the panning option, or the panning control. And then once we found the area that we wanted, say for example this area, we'd zoom back into one to one, collect our editing tool, and then for example draw our polygon of our training site. But that's a lot of work considering you want to collect perhaps quite a few training sites and you're working with a large image. That's a lot of clicking around. I mean, you just did it once there, but I can imagine if you're doing this a lot, it's you've got to move in and out of the interface. And it's a lot of unnecessary clicking, exactly. So what we've actually introduced now is the ability to push down on your, on your mouse wheel, and that will put you into a temporary panning mode. So if I want to move away from this, I just simply click down on the mouse wheel. It's, as you notice, it goes into pan mode then I can drag it to a new area. Right. And I'm still in editing mode overall, so I can then click on the area once I've found a new feature to collect a training site on, and there we have it. That's great. Okay. So another uh, ability with the zoom or with the uh, wheel mouse is the ability to zoom in dynamically with the wheel mouse. So once again, you don't have to go up to the toolbar in order to zoom in or zoom out. You can do it quite easily, quite readily using the mouse wheel. So you can zoom in, pan to the site that you're interested in, collect your training site, move on to the next one. Exactly. All, all, all without clicking up top on any of the menus. Exactly. So, for example, I might be done with the urban area and I want to move on to a more rural area. So I zoom out with the mouse wheel, use the mouse wheel once again to pan over, and then I can zoom back in and then collect my training site once again. Great. So with this one, we've actually added the capability for doing drag and drop of multiple files. So imagine we have all these tiles from a completed mosaic that we want to add to our to, we want to add to our viewer. So originally, what we'd have to do is go into the file selector, navigate to the area, and then select the images. We could select them multiple at once, but it was still very time consuming. What we can do now is we can actually go right to the folder using the Windows interface, and then go select all of the images that we want to add to the project, and then drag them over into the viewer. And then you'll start to see in this pan over here all the images being, all the layers being added. Okay, and this, it looks like you dragged over some PIX files. What if I wanted to drag over TIFF or shape files or, you know, any, any file? They're all supported. Okay. In fact, even with raw data, for example, we have RapidEye, which comes with its XML file. And that's usually what's loaded. You can actually drag and drop the XML file and, and it will still properly render all the, NIT, all the NTF uh, image files in its proper uh, band uh, band order. Great. Okay, so uh, drag and drop works in uh, works in other parts of Geomatic as well. So what we have here is we have the easy window open for Geomatica 2012, and I'm just going to quickly show how drag and drop functionality can significantly improve the time it takes to set up a easy um, an easy algorithm or to run an easy algorithm, just due to the fact that we don't have to type in the entire path of the file. This is especially uh, beneficial for those uh, for those users who are more graphical uh, graphical users or more used to the GUI interface. Right. So before, what you would have to do, for example, if you wanted to uh, fulfill the po uh, populate the parameter file i, your input file, you would have to actually type out the path, and there's shortcuts you can use in the command prompt in order to get to the path faster, mm -hmm. or you'd have to copy and paste the path directly from a Windows prompt. But now what we can do is we can have file i, we can take our image, we can drag it in there fully includes the quotes as well. So now this parameter is set. So now, for example, if we want to status one of our algorithms, for example, f export, we'd be able to see that this parameter is now properly set. Okay, what Let's if I wanted to do file out? Now file out, that's an interesting one too. So we don't already have, the file does not exist, obviously. Right. 
So what we could do for that is you could actually take your output folder. So if we wanted to create, we can create our output folder. And then drag the folder in there and it's going to put the path in. And then after that you can just simply type in the name of the file that you want to that you want to save. So output.pix. Perfect. And you're good to go. Excellent. So if we status it one more time. We'll see that we've now populated everything necessary to run. One of the other things that we wanted to touch on as well here is the ability to use our image or layer selection tool, which will actually allow us to do a lot of different uh, useful uh, operations within the focus environment. So for example here, we just loaded a whole bunch of tiles from a uh, mosaic project into focus. Now if we look at the individual tiles, we can see that it's not a very pretty mosaic because each tile is being rendered with a different histogram. Mm -hmm. So it's using different enhancements on each tile. Now previously it was not possible to combine the histograms of all the images within the viewer in order to adjust the histogram uh, accordingly. Okay. But we can actually do this now. So what we're going to show here is our, our layer selection tool which allows us to basically select a layer or an a feature or an image inside the viewer and it will actually select that in this uh, in this um, maps tab. Now there's two advantages to this. The first one is if you have a lot of images loaded or layers loaded in your area, it can be very difficult to figure out which uh, specific layer corresponds to which feature or object or image inside the viewing. Yeah, um, unless you spend the time to rename everything and edit the names and all this. Exactly, exactly. So what we've done here is we've added this new uh, map layer selection uh, tool where you can click on it. We can also select all the layers or we can choose just rasters, vectors, or bitmaps. In this case, we're going to focus on just rasters. Okay. So I can actually now select individual oh, I tiles. Can, so I can see that the images you're clicking on are appearing in the table of contents. Exactly. So I mean that, that alone is actually quite useful because then it allows you to go into that layer, look at the histogram, look at the scatter plot, do a whole bunch of other options with that specific uh, layer should you need to do so. If there's a problem with one specific image, you can isolate it, visually identify what the issue is, find out which image it needs to be corrected. Exactly, exactly. just saves a lot of time. But there's other advantages. For example, I loaded this uh, mosaic tiles into the viewer. Now they each load with their own histogram and they're applied their own, the enhancement is applied to each layer alone. But say we want to look at this as if it were a complete single image. Mm -hmm. Now the way you, before in Focus this was not possible. But with this new tool you can actually drag, create a bounding box over the entire mosaic. If you notice it selects every single layer in the area. Mm -hmm. And then we can apply, for example, a, an adaptive enhancement. And you will see Oh, that beautiful. all of the images are, are updated in accordance to each other, so relative to one another. Right. We basically combine the histograms of all of the images that have been selected in order to do the enhancement. So there's some other new features in Geomatica 2012 relating to uh, how images are enhanced. Exactly. So once again, I consider this along the lines of just ways to make it easier on the user. So we've actually added these new auto-enhance capabilities. So by default, it's turned off. So basically, we can go to Tools in order to get this, in order to turn this uh, feature on. Go to Options, and then go down to Layers. And there's this option here, which is Auto Re-Enhance Grayscale and RGB Layers. So you click this on, click OK, and now what you're going to notice is that when I zoom into an area, so for example, go one to one, it's going to automatically enhance. The same is true when I pan around. So you don't need to hit the uh, enhancement button every time you load a new area. Because sometimes you go from one uh, image boundary to the next and, and you have to re-enhance it. Exactly. And that's particularly, um, this is particularly useful when you're working with both urban and vegetated areas. So for example, if I go to one-to-one -to -one here and we zoom over to this, without the enhancement, this area is going to look quite uh, quite dark due to the fact that the bright urban area has darkened the histogram or the enhancement will actually make the overall image look darker because the pixels are very bright mm -hmm. so it's normalizing that so it allows us to go back and forth between urban and uh, vegetated areas 
and not have to apply the enhancements, which so just saves like, it saves time once so again. You preserve the contrast as you're as you're moving around. Exactly. Perfect. So one of the things that uh, that's really neat about Geomatica is the uh, is the pix format. It's quite a good format. It's a very good format, in fact. Uh, one of the things is that we do not promote enough is the idea about this pix format. Uh, PCI disk basically takes uh, is a database file, so it's not a flat file. So what this means is there's two there's two parts to this. The first part is that you're just working with a single file. So if you compare this to other file formats out there, such as uh, the shape file, or such as even TIFF or N NITF, or many other uh, image formats, you actually have many, many different layers there. Sometimes one image or one file will represent a single, uh, a single layer, or one file will represent a single layer in the image or a single channel. And then sometimes you need additional files to represent metadata, so on and so forth, or this like pseudo color tables, lookup tables. And that is something that the PCI disk format does not require. So if you look here, everything in this... Makes it harder to manage. I know when you get some imagery from Spot or Digital Globe, basically every band comes as a TIFF file, and so you know makes it difficult to keep track of everything and keep it all organized. Oh, exactly, and one of the benefits of this is I can transfer this PIX file, so if I close this, I can transfer this PIX file on its own to my desktop, and it's not associated to any other file, so it's not all of a sudden going to going to stop working for me. Right. Whereas with other files, you have to pretty much transfer the entire folder over mm -hmm. so that their relative positions are still the same. So one of the other very um, useful characteristics of the PCI disk file is the fact that you can pretty much store anything to do with your image inside this file. So we can store rasters, both 8-bit, 16-bit signed, 16-bit unsigned, as well as 32-bit real. Uh, layers direct or channels directly within this file. I have never reached the maximum number of layers or channels that we can store in a single file yet. So you can store hundreds and hundreds of channels or layers or segments inside a file. The other interesting aspect is that you can store vectors with rasters, mm -hmm. you can store bitmaps, you can also store lookup tables. So there's some other cool things about the PIX format. Yes, uh, one of the last things that I wanted to touch on as well is the ability to store metadata directly into the file. So I'm just going to show an example. We can do file level metadata. If we go to the file itself, right click on it, go down to properties, and then we click on the metadata tab. But we actually already have this in place for 2012. We're extracting all this image metadata directly from the file when you use our CD spot. Uh, importing al algorithm. So you can import the data from the data provider, in this case Spot, can also be other types of data like RadarSat or... Yes, exactly. Uh, RadarSat we do the same thing with as well. Uh, we're still adding more and more sensor support for this, but we're going to continue to add this and as we add more and more sensor support, more and more algorithms will be capable to take advantage of this, which is going to significantly speed up the um, setup time for many of these algorithms particularly ones that are pre-processing, such as yeah. atmospheric correction. I can see also, even for simple things like, uh, you know, making a natural color composite, you know which bands to use because the metadata is there and it's easier to do that. Exactly. So one of the other things too, very quickly, is that I showed you file level. We also are providing channel level metadata. So if we go to properties, we also get things such as the radiometric uh, transformation or basically the gains and the biases of, of the imagery. We're looking at what is the measurement of it. We're looking at the minimum and the maximum wavelength for that channel. So we're just provided with a lot more information, which down the road as we create more and more algorithms that support this, mm -hmm. it's just going to significantly speed up the setup time and just make it a lot easier on our users. That's great. So not only is there metadata at the file level, even down at each channel. That's exactly. Great. Thanks for watching this episode of PCI Tech TV. Uh, we saw some uh, cool new things with Geomatica 2012, and uh, we hope you take the time to download a trial version and uh, give it a spin. Thanks very much. Take care.